last Wednesday, uh, I got I got uh, sucker punched. You know, I'm so so uh, so used to Rocky's ribs over all these years. I was just hoping it was a bad rib, but you know, when I got the call from um, Dwayne's assistant to run, to run up there, uh, I got there. The cops were there. I knew it was no longer a rib. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been it's been hard, but I know um, the family has had a um, hard time. You know, it's been I mean, it's a, it's a tragic loss. And uh, when you know, when I noticed some of the stuff on the internet, um, I just wanted to uh, on behalf of the family, on behalf of Ada and Dwayne and uh, and Curtis and Wanda and Tonga. And the, the rest of the Polynesian family, Serona, and, you know, the Snookers and Alpha and all of them, I, I just wanted to set the record straight. And and the Johnsons and us appreciated every person that attended there. We were honored on behalf, of, and I am speaking on behalf of Ada, that uh, that Vince and Pat Patterson, uh, first of all. Vince is family to them, and he's been there since uh, her dad, Peter, and uh, you know, and then Rocky, and then of course Dwayne, and then we have another generation coming up, and uh, and and throughout most everybody's career, and Pat Patterson is family. Pat Patterson was Peter Maviere's best American uh, friend when he, when, years ago, first person he ever knew. He was they were they were. And they've been friendly. And uh, Pat, um, as far as anything, the Johnsons uh, feeling disrespected, absolutely not. Okay, I can say that on behalf of them. They, they, they were honored that Vince took the, his time. Now, was by the time Vince spoke, it was approximately two hours that Vince sat there before, before he... Uh, it got a little carried away, as I noticed on the internet. Said, you know, it was a long, long sermon. Some of it was a little iffy, you know. And of course, there was some more drama there. It was a, it's an audience of ninety nine percent wrestlers, uh, and I mean, you had the, you had a who's who from, um, you know, from, from uh, you know Tonga to Haku's family to Alpha to the Snookers, and. and um, and uh, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Joe Gomez, Dory Funk, Brian Blair, Steve Kern, Jerry Briscoe, Leilani Kai, uh, Jimmy Hart, uh, Chris Markov, Davis Sierra, Ricky Santana. I'm just talking on top of my head. Luke Williams, Billy Alfonso, you name them. These people took their time out of the day. Tra- a lot of them travel far to come on a Rocky. And, 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 and the Johnson family. And not only... Uh, Ada and uh, and Dwayne, but uh, his other two, his son Curtis and and Wanda, and uh, and um, on top of it, I'm gonna be, you know, was Vince short? He but he was probably the most direct. He said exactly what Rocky would want somebody to say about him. He was a talented, gifted worker. The and he said the most uh, probably the, the the best thing he ever did which he admitted to me hundreds of times was marrying Ada and them having uh, and the, uh, a baby uh, named Dwayne. And, and he often spoke of his other two kids. He goes, I want to be remembered as a father, as, as a husband, and, and, and a, as a friend and a, and a worker. So, you know, with everybody showing up, I think he kind of spoke for himself. Did Pat use church language? Okay, if if you and I are talking right now, and I say, "God damn it," you're not going to think anything of me to say, "Damn, God damn it." No. Okay, yeah, you know, Pat, Pat, yeah, I did that. God damn it, you know this, and me and Rocky did this. Yeah, damn. You know, I mean, you you don't you're not taking any offense, right? No, no. And then he's, he's telling a story and goes, "Shit, yeah, we did that," uh, but you know. Did the preacher, this is the preacher. Uh, uh, yeah. oh, oh, another thing. I read, uh, and, and, and uh, the uh, when she called me back, she goes, it says that they, they pulled, t- the guys had to go up there and pull Pat off the stage. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's, that's how stories get That's what Billy wrote. No, they turned the mic off. And they turned the mic off, 
the guy sitting behind him turned the mic off, and then Pat said another sentence and walked off. And no MFs, no, he didn't look at Rocky. He was never disrespected. And uh, and uh, he said, gee, gee, damn, okay? You know, the only thing I want to clear up that the Johnsons are, uh, uh, and are absolutely uh, they were blown away for the amount of people that showed up and 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 paid respect and uh, you know I th- hey I think uh, Rocky would uh, I think he kind of gave me the eye you know I th- hey uh, it's a pretty impressive you know what Vince Vince said what he had to say and he said the most direct direct he I mean he was about telling stories I mean he, he said what Rocky would want to be rem- remembered for the most you know uh, uh, his wife his son his son and and daughter. And uh, and having been uh, made an impact in in the world of professional wrestling, so. And basically, you're saying that they may have been more tired than anything. I don't even you know about tired. I mean, everybody. I mean, after after sitting there, it was probably okay. Over the last couple months, I guess Rocky had gotten um, uh, uh, Steve Curtin and Brian Blair. You know, after all these years, he got back with him, and they took him to the church. And he, I guess he got comfort from it. And this is a humongous church. The place might hold, you know, three, three to 5,000 people. I don't know. Rocky, um, you know, initially, uh, it, it wasn't what uh, we thought um, when he first passed. It wasn't by standards that we'd done in the past, you know, like when Leah Mavia passed away. It's a small funeral, you know, in a, you know, in a funeral hall that's private. But it's probably it came probably a little unexpected that um, probably by the time Rick got up there to speak, it was, it was close to two hours in, you know, hour forty minutes. I you know I'm, I'm going to go an hour you know hour forty to about two hours in. So to say, I mean Vince, and then Vince was probably because after Rick spoke, I spoke, and then a few other people, and then I think right before. I, out of, or Vince got up, and I think, I think out of respect, he wasn't even on the program, but I think out of respect, he wanted, and he came a long ways. He sat for a couple hours, and I think he wanted to say something, you know, short and indirect, and, and get and you know and, and get off. But it was absolutely, and and the Johnsons were very, very, very thankful that he did. So you know, I guess you know if. If people have different ways, and by the time somebody tells somebody the story, the story, and, and you could turn anything you want, you know, like they do in today's society, but I'm I'm telling you direct, you know, as part of uh, as part of Rocky's family for the last 43 years, um, you know, we were we were honored to have every person that I named and those who I didn't name because. <laughs> on top of my head, I can't sit here and name everybody, but everybody, you know, ninety nine percent were from from the wrestling uh, community, which uh, it's a tight knit uh, community, uh, you know, as everybody knows, especially back in the day. So uh, that's as far as far as what I saw and what the Johnson saw, it felt nothing but love and respect. And you said you spoke at the funeral. I don't want to take up too much of your yeah. time. I know you're busy, but uh, is there anything you'd want to tell any of the fans listening about your close friendship with Rocky? As you said, forty plus years. I think you owned a gym together at one point. Yeah, we, uh, I, uh, I met Rocky back in '77. Dwayne was '77 um, uh, was five years old. At the time, where he's turning five, a ballpark. He's born in '72, so he's five years old at the time. And we had just adopted. My brother and I had just adopted a boy uh, out of a foster home. We basically kidnapped him, per se. He was uh, 60 pounds, 15 years old, with Down syndrome, and he became another son to Rocky. Uh, one of the story, a quick story I told at the um, at the funeral was being malnourished, his parents, uh, Milton's family uh, parents had passed away. He was put in a foster home, bouncing foster home to foster home. And I, obviously when you're 15 years old and weighing 60 pounds, there's, there was some hanky-panky malnourishment going on. But uh, we had him for maybe a t- couple of weeks back in uh, May of 77. 
And but Rocky had the answer to it, the malnutrition. So we we went over to uh, at a Rocky department uh, in Tampa on Havana Avenue, and Rocky was cooking up a dozen hot dogs, you know those giant packs of cheap hot dogs. So so he laid them all on the on the table and said, Milton, eat as many as you can. Well, I guess maybe about 15 minutes later they were all gone. So eat as many as you can. So and Rocky said, Hey, that's how. It, the boy just needs to eat. And he became Rocky's training partner. And I remember when Milton did the Special Olympics, when he won the medal, he gave it to Rocky. And so they had a special bond, as, as, as you probably noticed when you said you looked at the video last night, that, that Dwayne's uh, Seven Bucks and uh, Robin Roberts uh, produced uh, last uh, April. Rocky had a special bond with Milton, but Rocky had a special relationship with everybody in that gym, because Rocky had a gift of making everybody feel special. So, you know, and he would pull ribs, He, you know, he, and you met Rocky, and, you know, as he got older, of course, you know, he slowed down, but back in the day, Rocky was known for pulling ribs. Uh, for instance, somebody would walk in, you know, guys would come into the gym on, during work hours, a guy's, for instance, one, a guy's driving a banana truck, you know, delivering to all the produce companies, of course, he. He, he throws the keys up on the key rack. Rocky snatches the keys, hijacks the banana truck, pulls it about the, around the corner in the shopping center, and has the guy call the cops. Well, the cops come, start filing a report. Rocky walks in, go, and, and all of a sudden, miraculously, Rocky just saves the day and discovers the, the banana truck. But he was constantly, despite all these, you know, and everybody knew you know what happened, but it was innocent type of stuff. Um, you know, throughout the years, like he, once he, uh, he took Rocky had his ear, his ear pierced. So he took Milton to Tampa Bay mall and got his ear pierced. So they'd be like twins. <laughs> well, my brother was being busy against piercing. And so was Ada. So, so they brought Milton back with a pierced ear and boy, did they give, give Rocky hell. But Rocky thought it was, it, it, so it, it was, it, everything was a, was like a joke. And he, and he had a way of instigating too, especially his mother-in-law and father-in-law. And uh, and uh, we were all in Hawaii together. And he would do things. Uh, I'll never forget one time he had um, a couple. He had a couple instances. Peter, I mean Rocky, would just instigate, and he he knew how to pull Peter's chain and get him all worked up. So um, when in, we're in the Central YMCA. It's, Tonga, Haku, myself, Rocky, and Peter. And some guy comes up, big jacked up guy. How do I get into the business? And of course, he had used a couple of different words for the business. And Rocky says, well, meet the high chief here is the promoter. Come on into the radio. And the Central Y had a mat room next to the way room. So Rocky invited the guy when we get done uh, working out. Come on into the math room. So in, we go into the math room, and 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 the, and the guy says, must have been about 23, 24 years old, about two hundred eighty pounds. Right? The, the guy goes to Rocky, what's what's next? So Rocky goes, go over and challenge you to challenge the old man. And right, Peter was probably about forty two, forty three years old. And he said to go up to him and say, I challenge you, old man. So the guy listens to him. <laughs> so of course, Peter stretched him, did a little more than stretch him. And totally squashed him, and Rocky turns to the guy and says, "I guess you'll learn to respect your elders." And it was it was a it was a constant um, type of thing. And the stories I I, I could sit here from uh, for the next twenty four hours and tell you Rocky Johnson stories. But the one thing I can say is he was respected and loved by so many people, especially by my family, and uh, and. And uh, okay, one of the one of the things that just came to my head when uh, when Dwayne uh, graduated from high school and he got a scholarship down to the University of Miami, they they decided to move back to Tampa so they could be four hours away from uh, from from uh, from DJ, and he loved going to those games because when he was there, he knew that the commentators would come over to him and said, "Over here we have the WWF former champion." And, uh, Rocky Johnson, 
and whose son Dwayne plays for the Hurricanes. So he was still getting the notoriety, even though Dwayne was uh, was was playing football. And he he was so proud of of Dwayne, and that's probably his his proudest thing was Dwayne and and Dwayne took care of him anything that he needed. He was and that made him so happy. It was any he could ask for anything in the world, and if Dwayne could provide it, Dwayne was always there for him. You know, and and, and that's right to the end. And um, and, and basically like what Vince said, that's. You know, one of his biggest accomplishments is his uh, his, uh, his children. Well, thanks a lot uh, for sharing those memories. It sounds like he was a great guy. I've never heard really too much negative about Rocky Johnson. Most people had positive experiences um, with him, and I'm very sorry for you about the passing of your friend. Yeah, like I, like I said earlier, he made he had a way of making people feel special. You know, and uh, and that's probably how he, he made you when you when you when you met him, and and he carried he carried that that was his, that was his gift.